Hi, Zachary Burns here. I'm an amateur radio operator and my call sign is N8ZAK. I'm also a weather enthusiast and today I'm going to show you how to get weather history uh, from the National Weather Service into GR Level 3 for further study and I'll show you how to do this right now. So you can go to the National Weather Service uh, their archives at uh, has.ncdc dot noaa dot gov and we'll go there now and we're going to pull in NextRad 3 uh, NextRad level 3 data go ahead and click this and so right now you need to pick the weather radar site that you want to pull the data from and I'm going to pick Cleveland and you can see they've got data going back to 1995 through yesterday's date and I'm going to pull actually something a little more uh, exciting, uh, at least as, uh, as far as uh, our neck of the woods is concerned here. Uh, there was a rather severe EF4 tornado that rolled through our area uh, back in June of 2010. It was actually on June 5th, and it happened in the evening. Uh, when most people were either asleep or just going to sleep probably about the uh, 10.45 to 11.15 time range so uh, we're going to pick uh, June 4th to June 6th of 2010 and the National Weather Service wants an email address just so they know who is pulling their data and uh, put that in there and it went ahead and found some uh, archive data format and this is a Unix uh, uh, gzipped or uh, zipped file format here and we're going to tell it to retrieve all the files or you can choose one of them if you want but we're going to pull them all and um, there's nothing really we need to do and just hit retrieve and notice these are large files they're over um, uh, let's see we've got uh, 20 meg 25 meg so they're pretty big um, and it contains the entire next rad 3 radar data for those dates in, in question so I'm gonna let these uh, uh, download and um, it's going to uh, it's gonna go ahead and uh, submit this data to the national uh, the NOAA and come back with our results so I'm going to get this data and then I'll show you how to process it. So we've been given a link that we can click on to monitor our job status and it looks like we're at about 66% complete and we can monitor that and it looks like we're 100% complete and we're actually going to get an email sent to our uh, mailbox so let me go check that and we'll resume. So in our email we've been given a link that we can click on and we can retrieve this data or we can log in via FTP but we're gonna go in here and we're gonna pull these files and we're gonna save them locally and this is gonna take a little while and I'm gonna download each one of those days and when these are complete we will resume the video as you can tell it's a new day and I've waited for those uh, downloads of level 3 NextRad data and I got an email we downloaded them and we'll put them in a directory and let's go ahead and grab these uh, gzip files and there's also a utility you want to download it's ncdctorv3.exe and what it essentially does is take the uh, the uh, NextRad data and converts it to GR level 3 format and uh, right from the zip file so you don't have to download 7-zip or anything like that to uncompress these you can pretty much just take both of these files copy them create a directory on your C drive is probably the easiest thing to do and since you're running Windows uh, since GR level 3 only runs under Windows we'll just create a directory called history put this data in there and uh, go out to a command prompt change to the history directory and that's 
that's from Cleveland. Hit OK. It asks if level 3 data. Um, if you want to uncompress it there, go ahead and say yes. And this will take a minute. It's taking about uh, anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand files. Uh, it's typically 12 or 1300 files, uh, somewhere upwards of 1800 files. And decompressing them and converting them over to this native uh, GR level 3 format, this RV3 format. And so we'll let this go and we'll continue on. And I've done this before for some, uh, some of this data. It's pretty interesting. And so I've started GR level 3 and I'm going to grab some, uh, some uh, data from a June 5th tornado that happened in the area of 2010. And it was a late night tornado about 11 o'clock in the evening. And what I'm going to do is show you pretty much how destructive these things can be and how unpredictable they can be. So I've taken uh, about anywhere, for, and remember this is, uh, uh, there's 18 files here I grabbed. I'll grab another snapshot of an hour or so. You can select what you want, drag it into GR level 3, and you'll see it just changed here. And um, one thing to notice, you're not going to get warnings. So as we play this out, you're not going to get the warnings automatically populate, but the storm attributes do populate. So you can leave that up if you are if you want to see the cells and that type of thing. But I'm going to close it right now just to simplify this a little bit. So, um, so here it is, 9 in the evening on June 5th looks like some passing thunderstorms nothing real too crazy it looks like it gets a little interesting around 10 o'clock or so here's the Toledo area right here Bowling Green and some of these uh, western counties here and uh, some of the cities Boise and Bryan Defiance there was actually um, either this evening or the evening before I believe it was this evening earlier uh, a horse got picked up out of a field and plopped into somebody's swimming pool so that just kind of shows you how oh it looks like it's just a passing thunder shower no big deal uh, how quickly these things develop so here it looks like they've got some storm tracks uh, you know the tops of these are pretty small these cells the tops are about um, oh, 30,000 feet uh, this one's growing and just to show you how fast these cloud tops can go, we'll just go another couple minutes and you can see how quickly these storms grow. And um, the uh, one hour rainfall isn't too, uh, isn't too crazy. So it looks like just a passing shower here. They're tracking it. Some of the things we've already seen in previous videos. Now let me grab some data that came from another hour after this let's just grab another 16 files and you can just click drag and uh, drop it right on top of GR level 3 and we'll zoom into the area here and I'll step through this just so you can see here's that um, that mesocyclone that I was talking about if this is dashed uh, this is showing upper level a cyclonic activity. If it's solid, it means it's toward the ground here. So it shows you even how um, even how uh, fast the winds are in in this uh, cyclonic circle here. Well, it, and this isn't true uh, a true spot of where this is happening. It's just in this in this cell somewhere. So it's not pinpoint accuracy. So that's why it's kind of dangerous to use this as storm uh, chasing software. Um, it's it, the data is old for one, and it's not pinpoint accurate. Uh, for example, this was not detected at uh, approximately 10:39, and uh, at the next scan, five minutes later, this was detected. So even if you were up here, these are uh, let's just show you the range rings. These are 25 mile swaths. So if you uh, if you were in here and thought you could have if you saw this mesocyclonic activity, if you saw this or TVS signature data and thought you could outrun this storm, uh, you're, you're sorely mistaken. You're not really sure where it's going to go and how quickly it's going to get here. 
So here's Bowling Green, here's Toledo, and we'll step through this. And you can see that it picked up in speed very quickly. And um, you can actually see this is, uh, this is another look at uh, vertical, uh, if you go to vertically integrated liquid and choose this, it'll actually show you another tab called VIL and uh, it'll give you a sort of an indication as to as to what's happening there but look at the uh, look at the tops how quickly the tops of the storm grew it went from you know 45,000 to another 5,000 feet in altitude and in, in literally uh, a few uh, a few minutes so we can step through this and you can see that that uh, cyclonic activity is really ramping up here just uh, just uh, it actually started over the Perrysburg area and there were sirens that were going off for this um, but they were if I remember it was a, a windy evening um, but uh, I think these were a little um, uh, these storms cropped up pretty quick they knew the potential of these storms so um, uh, there was a there was a watch put out but I don't think anything uh, crazy these uh, storms popped up real real quick and so we can step right through it and a tornado did hit this area of Wallbridge, Millbury, Clay Center uh, just west of Genoa area and uh, I believe four to five people died in this storm so it was uh, it was a pretty big wedge tornado too um, but you can uh, just step right through this and you can see it was a pretty good um, a pretty good fast moving storm and it was quick too and uh, we can actually go to um, the relative velocity and you can see some of the some of the winds in here when they turn red that wind was moving in there pretty good and the storm was moving through the area pretty fast too so um, so that's kind of interesting and uh, that's how you look at the history in um, GR level 3 so hopefully you found that a little interesting and uh, educational